So section 3.5. So think about this statement here. So if it's raining outside, then we'll play indoor football. I'm talking about actual football. I'm not talking about American football. So this statement is what we call a conditional statement. There's a condition to this statement. So this is an example of a conditional statement. So what this means is, given a certain condition, something's going to happen. So this tells me that if there's rain outside, it's going to tell us what we're going to do. Hi, Kareem. Hi, Kareem. Hi. I want your attention. I'm an attention hog. When I'm talking, I want all of your attention because I so much, uh, all my value and worth comes from the fact that I get everyone's attention all the time. <clears throat> so this is a good name because this statement depends on a condition. Um, you've probably heard these if-then statements. So if it is someone's birthday in my class, then that means it's a special day, right? There you go. So this is an if-then statement. Yes. Yep. So, um, I'm assuming no one here has done any computer programming? Anyone who wants to be a computer, uh, computer game designer, you deal with if-then statements. Okay, so the first part of this statement, so that if it's raining outside, this is called an assumption. So we're going to assume that. I totally misspelled assumption. So this is the part that you assume is correct. Um, this is also known as the hypothesis. Have you heard of the term hypothesis before? You should have heard this in... Yeah. So if you were doing an experiment in physics, chemistry, math, something like that, then you're going to have a hypothesis, meaning this is what uh, you're going to assume or what you're trying to figure out. Yeah. So we'll use it slightly different here, but this is our hypothesis. And if the first part, the if it's raining outside, is the hypothesis, any guesses what the then part of our statement is going to be? What's that? I was Miss Naveen. Miss Naveen? Yeah. So that you missed the first eight minutes of the lesson? Do you know what's the great thing about being the, the definition of late, Kareem? Whether you're late one second or whether you're late eight minutes, you're still late. I'm talking to him. I wasn't meaning that towards you. Oh, me. He, no, Kareem. Kareem was rubbing it in your face that you guys came eight minutes late. He also came late. So. So the second start part is our result. So if this... If this assumption happens, then this must be the result. If you study for a test, then you should get a good mark. If this happens, then this. This is the whole conditional statement of what we're dealing with today. So if this is our hypothesis, this is going to be the conclusion. Can you think of a conditional statement yourself? What would be an if-then statement that you could make? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something like, 
if someone has head or earbuds in my class and they're in their ears, then I'm going to assume they're not paying attention to me. What could be another conditional statement? Need if and then and then. This is important. This is something you're going to have to do in the test. Yeah, so there's one. What's another one? There's many things we can think about. Not all of them need to be me trying to enforce rules. It could be if the class is silent, then there's an awkward silence. What else? If, how about I start, I'll start a sentence, you come up with the conclusion. So if, um, if it is sunny outside, then what? Yeah, then the weather's warm. What else could be another part of the conclusion? If it's sunny outside, then what? Nobody? We said then it's warm, then we can play outside, or for some people then I want to be inside. If I get 100% on the test, then what? Then, then I'll get a good grade and I'll pass. What else could happen? Yeah, then I'll be on the dean's list. Then my parents are going to be excited. Then I'm going to rub it in the face of my classmates. There could be many different conditional statements based on an initial assumption. So let's, let's pick one up here. <clears throat> and make it very relevant to today. So if... This could be dangerous. If you have COVID, then what? Then you must quarantine, yeah. Uh oh, quarantine. I think I spelled it wrong. It should be an E. Quarantine. I have no idea how to spell quarantine. Right? So this might not. Did I spell it right? Quarantine. Thank you. So these are conditional statements. Is this necessarily a true statement? Yeah. It all depends, right? So there is some notation for this um, where you can write it out like this. So P implies Q. It just means if P, where P is your hypothesis, then Q, Q is your conclusion. So this is just a way to write this out. So if we said, uh, for instance, going back at this example, if it's raining outside, so it's raining outside would be represented by P. Will play indoor football is represented as Q. This will become more important when we talk about it tomorrow and in the lesson tomorrow. But this is just good for you to see this multiple times. So the assumption is called the P, and the, the conclusion is the Q value. Any questions on this? Yep. So you will, there's many types of questions I can give you. Um, you'll see those all in the practice problems. I could give you a statement like this and say, um, what's the conclusion? What's the assumption? How is this related to math? So if then statements are very mathematical. Part of math is logic and logical thinking and log logical reasoning. So being able to logically reason your way through a sentence is math. Math isn't just equations, it's also a thought process. So math 
is actually a small part of uh, philosophy. So philosophy, math is just a portion of philosophy. So that's why we've got some logic stuff that's going on here. So as I kind of alluded to, not all conditional statements are true. So we can disprove something by coming up with a, a, t a technique called a counterexample. So a counterexample just disproves this statement. And you just need one counterexample to disprove it. So consider this statement. If it's Monday, then it's a school day. Is this always true? No. Give me a counterexample. What's an example where this is wrong? Holiday. It's a holiday. So think about last week. Last week we had a Monday, but it's not a school day. So for example, um, it's a holiday. So think about the counterexample that we made before. If you have COVID, then you must quarantine. What would be a counterexample to that? Yeah, and some people don't. Um, but that wouldn't go against the, the example. So the example says, then you um, must quarantine. So people might not choose to do that. What about a place where there is no quarantining rules? Yeah, or everyone's sick. Then who cares if you quarantine? So those would be two different counterexamples. So you could say everyone has COVID. That would be somewhat morbid, but maybe that's a good counterexample for this. So we can always come up with some sort of counterexample. And once you've got one counterexample, the whole statement is false. False? Yep. So as soon as I make something that is, disproves it, then it's not a true statement. So a conditional statement doesn't necessarily have to be true. I could say something ridiculous like, um, if it's sunny outside, then it must be a Saturday. That meets the definition of a conditional statement. I've got a hypothesis and a conclusion but it's completely irrelevant. So counterexamples are a good way to disprove that. So let's think back to this original statement that we talked about. Um, what are we doing? So remember I said, if P, then Q. We can switch those. So this part, for example, it's raining outside. We said this is P. Then we'll play indoor football. This is Q. But let's switch this around. So if we're playing indoor football, then it's raining outside. So all I did was switch the P and the Q. So I said, if we're playing indoor football, then it's raining outside. Do you think that's a true statement? No. Wait, wait, can you read it again? Yeah. If we're playing indoor football, then it's raining outside. No. What would be a counterexample for that? Not true, but you need to think of a situation where we're playing indoor football. Yeah, it could be too hot. What could be another example? Too cold. Windy. Windy. The fields could be uh, could be full. Maybe there is no field outside. Construction. construction. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why this might not be true. Um, so it's too hot outside. So counterexample again. You just need one. We just disproved that statement. So this thing that we just did where we switched the, the assumption and the conclusion, this is what's called a converse. Those of you who like your shoes, 
we got Converse. So I'm almost done with the notes. Today's a quick one. So if we can make a statement where the original is true and the converse is true, uh, we have a special word for this. So this means that these two things are completely true. There's no counterexamples. These are called biconditional. Meaning, you should know what bi means. Think about bicycle. Just means two. So two conditions. It works both ways. Meaning, if I can make a statement that works um, if P then Q, if Q then P, then we're good. Questions on that? No, we're good. What? Too many people are on their phones. Okay, so there's some notation stuff here. You need to know those because I will ask you what those mean on the, on the chapter three test, which is incidentally for you guys next, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. All right, so that is section 3.5. Um, in the lesson tomorrow on this, we're going to go even a step further with this and go with negation. So just adding not into the statement.